Dear friends, uh, New South Wales state elections are just around the corner. They are happening on the 25th of March. And this time, we have some Indian origin candidates in the fray. Uh, joining us today is Karishma Kalyanda, who is the Labour candidate from Liverpool. Uh, Karishma, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Pallavi. Um, Karishma, now uh, Labour is uh, sorry. Liverpool is generally considered a safe Labour seat. Uh, now, is that a, does that give you a sense of comfort, or does that actually add more pressure? So, how is your campaign going so far? Uh, look, Pallavi, I think what various elections have shown us is that uh, there's no such thing as a safe seat, um, and the mindset that I'm taking into the election is that no vote for granted. So ever since my candidacy was finalised uh, back in November, I've been, um, you know, being out there as much as possible, thinking to about what issues matter to them, uh, highlighting the policy platform that Labour is taking into this election, and also really um, highlighting the, the vision um, in terms of what Labour sees for New South Wales and what Labour sees for uh, going forward if a Labour government is elected. Um, uh, now, Karishma, besides the uh, anti-incumbency factor, I mean, uh, uh, the Liberal Party has been in power in New South Wales for a long time now. Uh, what, what are, say, I could ask you three things that Labour is offering to the people in New South Wales, uh, besides the fact that, you know, uh, advocating for a change of government? Sure. Look, I think um, the, the the biggest issues that people speak to me about, um, especially over the last sort of um, six months or so, is around cost of living. And um, Labor has a, a, a range of different policies that we are using um, to living pressures on, on people in our community. So first and foremost, we know that, um, you know, especially over the last three to four years, the tolls that the Sydney siders pay is incredibly high. I think it's one of the tallest cities in the world, not just in Australia, but in the world. And so one of the um, the commitments that Labor has made is um, we will cap tolls at $60 per week. So similar to how public transport is on your card when you tap, it, tap on and off, um, we will cap the amount that people pay in tolls. Um, we've also announced a significant um, policy in terms of energy and uh, what we will be investing in in terms of renewables, in terms of storage, so that um, it helps ease the, the, the pressure in terms of people's energy bills. Um, the other sort of, uh, especially in southwest Sydney, the, one of the other issues that people are talking about is uh, the state of and um, Liverpool and Southwest Sydney more broadly is one of the fastest growing uh, populations in Australia. And unfortunately, the uh, the health infrastructure has not kept pace with that. And so in Southwest Sydney or Liverpool Hospital specifically, we have seen in the last three months of 2022, we saw a 172% increase in the number of people that were leaving the emergency department either being treated at all or without completing their treatment. So these are people that um, came to the emergency department, obviously because they were unwell or something had occurred. And um, because of uh, the excessive wait times, they could have been up to eight hours or longer, um, they decided that it was a better option for them to leave, maybe you know take some medication, hope they woke up in the morning. And, uh, and and saw another another option. And one of the the reasons for that is because our health is um, at capacity. We have heard, uh, you know, not just from nurses but also allied health professionals and other uh, health staff that um, the the conditions, especially the pay in New South Wales, is not states like Victoria and Queensland and we're actually seeing a net reduction of staff because um, you know states like Queensland are ad advertising for nurses um, and nurses are choosing to take up that opportunity so um, you know the, the real um, uh, significant issues that have a flow on factor in terms of the the care that's received by our residents and and finally the the third um, issue that I would highlight as well is um, education so um, 
one of the fastest growing populations and for um, a, such a significant population. Um, so by 2036, Southwest Sydney is predicted to have a population similar to that of Adelaide, which is one of the capital cities of Australia. And yet, mm -hmm. um, in, in all of that, there was a single high school that was, uh, you know, scheduled for construction or development in some of the new suburbs. So has made some significant commitments around uh, building a hospital uh, in the new Eritropolis or in the new city of Bradfield, which is quite important to take sure of hospitals like Liverpool, as well as building uh, pr both primary schools and high schools in some of our new growth areas, which is essential if we are to uh, to support the fast growing southwest uh, Sydney. Uh, so, um, uh, so if I were to summarize, uh, you're saying that the three uh, big uh, points for Labour Party are one is uh, uh, you're talking about like um, cost of living, uh, health, and education. So those are going to be the three uh, main uh, points uh, for Labour. Uh, there are three main points that I'm, uh, you know, hearing in my community, but there's a range of different policies that um, Labour is taking to this election. There's actually a fantastic. A website that people can reference um, and you know we're calling it our fresh start plan and this means that we have made commitments on not just those three areas but we've made commitments on um, on climate change we have made commitments on housing we've uh, we've made commitments on multiculturalism on a whole range of policy areas um, which is comprehensive. Um, and uh, uh, that was my follow on question that um, I think Liverpool and Western Sydney also has a pretty vibrant uh, Indian diaspora. Uh, uh, are there any specific issues relating to the Indian Australian uh, community that uh, the party in general and you in particular as a candidate are going to address? Sure. I think um, the uh, Indian diaspora around um, Liverpool is one that I have been um, a part of since my family moved into this area um, almost years ago. And so um, in that time, obviously, the needs of the community have changed. Um, we're now into sort of our second to third generation of um, of the community. The, pri the priorities and the focuses are also sort of evolving as, as um, the community itself changes. And so... Um, one of the biggest things is how we, um, in Southwestern and Western Sydney, how we account for the, the different way that our communities come together, the different uh, types of engagement that our community have with various services and institutions and things like that. Um, I think, you know, this was especially highlighted where um, you know part of the uh, the reason why southwestern and western Sydney was hardest hit was because um, you know those in government didn't quite understand the you know the diverse nature of our community and and what that meant in terms of policy implementation in particular. And so you know um, we know that um, community for, for multicultural community. Other institutions like our religious organisations, community organisations, um, are, are very close to and involved in um, how government, in, you know, interacts with with people and and should be involved with things like, um, you know, the rollout of um, communication, uh, the rollout of, of policies and programs, and those sorts of things. So um, we can't we can't develop a one size fits all approach. Approach is so diverse, and um, we need to make sure that um, you know people aren't locked out of government support because of that. Um, and Karishma, if you're elected, um, then you will become, if I'm not mistaken, the first Indian origin candidate to be elected to the legislative assembly. I mean, we do have uh, Daniel Mukhi, uh, you know, in the Senate, who's also the shadow treasurer uh, uh, as of now. Uh, but you would uh, become the first elected Indian origin uh, candidate in the legislative assembly. How big is that pressure? I mean, does that is that something that is at the back of your mind or you, are, you keep that thought aside for now? Uh, to be honest, I I think I'll I'll keep that that thought aside for now. Um, firstly, because um, obviously I'm not yet elected, and I don't take that for granted. So I still need to work hard over the next month to gain the support of my community and um, and and um, have that privilege of hopefully being elected. Um, but secondly, I think it's very important that um, you know this isn't seen this is this isn't seen as as 
not right. You know, our parliaments, our, um, you know, our institutions, our commercial organizations, every aspect of our society should mirror the diversity that exists within our broader community. Um, you, you highlighted a really significant point, which is, um, you know, in, in political spaces, we don't have enough uh, cultural and linguistic diversity. And I think, um, you know, that that results in a in a significant challenge for our institutions because um you know being from a culturally diverse background it means that uh, um, a lot of experiences a lot of situations and a lot of things that occur within our community um you know i or other people who have had a similar experience would understand that and can relate that in in how we um you know how we present decisions and policies and things like that and so i hope that um this is uh this is the start of seeing greater diversity in our candidates regardless of political background um and all the you know the institution yeah. and one uh, last question karishma you have come this far uh, there'll be a lot of people uh, who are going to be watching you uh what what would you like to say to uh, you know, other Indian origin youngsters who may be contemplating should we get into politics or shouldn't we get into uh, politics? Uh, do you think that now the time has come uh, where uh, Indian origin uh, politicians are going to be taken seriously? Like, because earlier there has been this perception that, you know, there were candidates who were given like token nominations, but it does seem that, uh, you know, the community has crossed that threshold and that, you know, that uh, uh, people from the community who get into politics are going to be taken far more seriously. Uh, so what is your, uh, you know, what would you like to say uh, to youngsters who are contemplating whether they should get into politics or not? Look, I think, um, you know, every you know every role or every person who um who looks at stepping into a representative capacity whether it's at a local government level state government or federal government um does so for a variety of things and um you know personally my um you know my, my desire to be involved in politics and uh, and and be in this space was driven by a desire to be part of a solution rather than just many of them. And like I, I was saying before, I hope in seeing um, you know faces that look like theirs, um, seeing people with backgrounds that are familiar, that encourages other people to um, to feel like this is a space that um, can make change and they can be you know part of a decision making sphere as well. Because um, you know politics, our institutions, um, you know, these decision making bodies should be filled with um, with Australians, regardless of your linguistic background, regardless of, um, you know, the journey that you might have had up until this point, every person brings, um, you know, their own unique perspective to the table and, as and you know, the results of their experiences, their, the results of their upbringing and their values. And so regardless of um, you know, your background, I really hope that people who want to be involved in making change and being part of a solution um, see this as, um, you know, a, a space that they can they can do that within. Uh, Karishma, thank you so much for joining us. And I wish you all the best uh, going forward from here. And uh, we'll uh, wait for the results of the elections and uh, all the best. Thanks so much, Pallavi, for your support. And um, if I can also just uh, express my gratitude and appreciation for all of the um, the supportive messages and the um, the warmth that I have received from um, both within the Indian community and other communities as well. Um, it's very humbling. And I think uh, especially when you are in the middle of a campaign receiving um, and such encouragement is yeah, is very very welcome so i just want to express my gratitude and thanks to everyone for that yeah and and also you're a candidate for everyone uh, in the sense uh, you know for the entire liverpool area so it's it's great that you're from uh, the indian diaspora but at the end of the day you are you're going to be representing everyone yes absolutely and um i hope i have uh, i Issues um, in terms of the many representatives who have um, represented this area, uh, both at uh, state, federal, as well as local government level. So, um, you know, they're really they're really good lessons to take on. Thank you so much, Karishma. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pallavi. Take care.